How we doing today guys? It's Sam and Alex here. We've got a lot of stuff going on for our fishery report this week. We're going to start off with our big sales coming up. Mm -hmm. Customer appreciation is right around the corner next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Almost everything in the store is going to be on sale. We're going to have sales on everything here at this table. Um, also, if you don't want to come into the store, you can sign up for virtual shopping. Well, you get one of us, we'll walk you through the store, pick out what you want, and we can get you all set up there. Mm -hmm. All right. So, the Let's rockfish. Get started. Yeah, rockfish. I mean, rockfish is obviously continuing to get better oh, yeah. and better. Uh, like we always mention, whatever you want to choose to do is pretty here. much working this time of the year. Uh, so, what have you been hearing about, Sammy? Uh, a lot of guys are still trolling. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much anywhere it seems like from the mouth of the Severn and all the way up towards the mouth of the Patapsco. It's been pretty consistent on uh, both sides of the bay, west, east, wherever you want to go trolling in this channel, you know, around the channel at just right. 28 to, you know, 35 feet of water. Start. People are starting to go a little bit deeper, but not too much. Um, primarily, they're still trolling your basic setups. Lots and lots of umbrella rigs, whether it be shad style umbrellas or spoon umbrellas like we have here from Captain John. All sorts of just big teaser rigs. You know, there's so much bait pouring out of the rivers this mm -hmm. time of the year. You want to have big profiles of bait. Right. Yeah, and like you were mentioning, that six inch profile is probably the perfect size mm -hmm. <clears throat> for this actual um, period of time that we're mm -hmm. in right now. Absolutely. Which is uh, probably your mid fall as we speak of right now. Like you mentioned, swim umbrellas also work. Uh, so, you know, I've been hearing a lot about the mass of Patapsco and also into the Patapsco, but also this week, heard a good amount of word of the actual Chester. Okay. Uh, a lot of fish, like you mentioned, flowing out mm -hmm. uh, from Swan Point to Love Point, people just zigzagging back and forth and actually catching a decent amount of uh, fish. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly uh, what I've heard was uh, outgoing tides. Of course, yeah. that bait's flowing out, so everything kind of stacks in those areas. But uh, besides trolling, there's also other things to do, right? In we this can general always area. Jig. Yeah, you can always jig, you know, we're lucky enough to be in a place where the bridge is almost always going to hold jiggle mm -hmm. fish. But fishing in all those same areas, I mean, if you hit the tides right, those fish, you know, exactly like you said, between Swamp Point and Love Point, they're going to get concentrated at some point in the day. You can mm -hmm. target them with jigs. Um, fishing things like half ounce, three quarter ounce, you probably don't need too often or we're going up to a one ounce. But if the wind and the tide are at the right spot, you might need up to a one ounce. Um, and I would say we're fishing some a little bit larger size this time yeah. of year. We're moving up to primarily seven inch baits profile of the baits are typically seven inch um these are bass assassins which are even better than 20 percent off which we're going to have on all of our lures this yeah. upcoming next weekend buy so, one get buy one, one get one free yeah buy one get one free i mean that's a pretty amazing that. sell there so if i was you i would come in and load Stock up on some of those because there's multiple different types and besides mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned you know having your seven and five inch profile baits paddle tails they always mm -hmm. work uh, those guys, I know some people say not to jig with them. Mm -hmm. You can throw them out there and not necessarily snap jig, but yeah. bouncing on the bottom. They work, they do a lot, they have a little bit more action. Uh, and also shallow water fishing, you can actually throw them out there and just work them slow. Yeah. So they're really a multi-purpose bait in a way. You can rig them multiple different ways. So. You can rig them a hundred ways, you can catch a hundred different fish on them. Mm -hmm. And they're just so easy to fish. There's not much of a learning curve like fishing a straight right. tail bait, even though it can be super effective. Uh, one of my favorite things to do with paddle tails is just cast it out and do a few handle turns and then just do one quick one for that mm -hmm. reaction thing right but still rolling that real smooth and the, i mean especially baits like this these rib profiles are getting more and more popular yeah just because of how that tail moves it i mean that tail really swings back and forth so besides that we're still talking about shallow water fishing uh being pretty good and mm -hmm. of course everybody knows it because of rock tour and you know the girls yeah. saying like that of you know fishing shallow top water so good in the mornings uh top water is still pretty good in any kind of you know deep point i mean point that is close to deep water mm -hmm. in you know, any of these rivers i know seven river has been producing a couple fish here and there in the mornings uh good quality size fish uh patapsco is still pretty hot uh and one men one area that we can't really mention still is way up north like hodges bar and whatnot yeah. Good size fish up there. Uh, I mean, shallow in there. Uh, you have deep drop offs close to that, you know, I guess shoal area. Mm -hmm. And even in there, you're producing. And there's some other baits that we uh, also have on sale there are also producing fish. Mm -hmm. uh, jerk baits. Always. I know you're your favorite. Big jerk bait guy. Yeah, uh, we always talk about these. You're never not going to hear us talk about the jerk baits because they produce 
fish, catch a lot of different fish, and there's a whole bunch of different styles of jerk baits. Uh, the better thing with that is that they're also on sale. You buy two, you get some cool stuff like this, hats or a t-shirt. So if you mm -hmm. buy any two Rapala products or lures, of course you're gonna get some cool Rapala swag for the oh, yeah. sale. So, but you know, getting back to the fishing stuff, uh, that guy, I personally like it. Uh, I actually used it this past few days. And the reason why it's because it's a sinking mm -hmm. jerk bait. So of course, if you need to count it down to deeper water, you can do that, and then you know you sometimes you can actually, oh, not jig it, but you can reel it in, stop, and it'll sink. No. It's a little bit different uh, reaction. This guy here is almost like a topwater sweep, but it's not. It's uh, subsurface. Mm -hmm. So whenever they're not hitting topwater, I like to throw that because it'll stay just a couple inches below the surface, and you know you'll produce some fish. Another thing I like to do before we leave rockfish is fishing dock lights this mm -hmm. time of the year. Yeah. It's something people don't talk too much about, but it's an awesome fishery. Um, fishing on dock lights and pretty much most of your northern bay rivers mm -hmm. are always pr productive um, and i throw a lot of paddle tails and i throw a lot of jerk baits and those are pretty much my two mainstays and you know i bury those throughout the night and sometimes you do get the opportunity to throw top yeah. waters and whatnot but fishing dock lights is something you can do you know now through mid no late yeah. november um, it's a lot of fun especially if you're like us and work every night you, you really don't get out till it's dark mm -hmm. so uh, that's so you can do that if, you, if you're into night fishing, of course, you know, that's one great way to do it. And just touching basis on the surf fishermen, uh, reports are picking up from Sandy oh, yeah. Point. Uh, you know, they closed down, uh, what is it, Matic Peak Aroma Code for night fishing. Mm -hmm. So those are shut down for uh, night fishing now. Remember, it's only until, I guess, it closes sunset. So Sandy Point's actually producing a decent amount of fish with cut bait. Uh, and that is your fresh LY, of course we have that. Uh, soft crabs, and you have your little favorite rig there, Sam. So yeah, tell us what simple that is. little fish finder rig, if I can ever hold on to it. <laughs> it's been around forever, really simple. So all you do is take the main line that comes off your rod, you add a little slider with a um, snap underneath. You can clip on whatever weight you want. You're gonna stop that slide with a simple snap swivel Going out to 12, 18 inches a liter. If you're fishing from shore, you're gonna do shorter. If you're on the boat, I mean, you can always go a little bit longer. But not only does this work for rockfish, but catfish too. Catfish, I mean, there's yeah. been a lot of big catfish being caught in the past week or two. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the same rig we'd be using for them yeah. as well. You can um, use it for all kinds of fish, with all kinds of yeah, different I mean, types of Yeah, you go down south, you have the opportunity of red drum, black yeah. drum, all sorts of things like that. Um, also, as far as bait goes for the catfish, chicken livers, fresh cut LY, all sorts of baits like that are gonna work. And um, there's been a lot of big ones caught yeah. in the past week or two. And then if you want to go to some of the, what I call the uh, actual catfish country area <laughs> up here that's been actually pretty pr producing some good fish, it's always a corner mango dam. Mm -hmm. Right below it, there's a big old park there. You can shore fish for them. Uh, I've seen a couple guys online posting a picture of some, some good sized flatheads up there <laughs> the past week or so. So you can try that out. There's always different kinds of fishing to do all around the all area. Around. Uh, and it's not that far from here, probably a couple, 40 minutes or so yeah, from Annapolis. Maybe. So you can always go ahead and do that. And before we leave Rockfish, let's uh, talk about a little bit, you know, of teaser rigs. Mm -hmm. uh, now we sell these, or you can make them yourself, and you can add whatever you want on that. Yeah. This has a little bucktail teaser on the front. Uh, you can jig with them, you know, like slow jig on the bottom. Stings, Top rovers, orders. bucktails, yeah. all sorts of baits you can put on the bottom underneath of Sometimes those. when you have smaller fish, you'll focus on that little teaser, yep. but sometimes even the bigger fish will hit that, so oh, for sure. that works. So there's still bluefish around, still and even some mackerel. Fish. A couple mackerel were caught this week, which is, you know, it's the first time we've heard about it in maybe a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, a gentleman came in today, so said he was catching some at the mouth of the magazine today, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, also down towards Hackett's, we've heard of yeah. a couple caught this week. I don't know if it's a resurgence. I don't know what is going on, but there are some mackerel out yeah. there to be caught. Um, you control slower this time of the year, which is, it's typically you want to slow things down as that mm -hmm. water temps cool down. So that's, I think, why people are maybe starting to catch them. Less people target them going fast. The fish is metabolism, they want to slow down. Now you have guys rockfish trolling and they're going to start catching right. them. Right. And like he mentioned, uh, you know, normally you don't see them too often mm -hmm. this time of the year. This year, of course, there's some of them left over for whatever reasons. Uh, if you want to try it out, go ahead and try it out uh, in this general area. If you really want to go search for them and try to actually catch a few more, way down south is going to be the areas where you want to be uh, mm -hmm. point lookout and even far south from there where you still have some good numbers of fish. 
Um, bluefish, once again, still yep. in the area. Jigging, trolling, metals, uh -huh. some of these plastics, you're gonna find them still. Before we you leave to some other stuff, let's talk about the white perch. Yeah. They're not completely gone. You still have some of those fish in the uh, mm -hmm. shallow waters, the creeks, the rivers, fishing near shoreline like mm -hmm. you've been doing. There might not be as many as we had a month ago, two weeks ago. But they're still there, right? They're still there. Um, this time of the year, I like to fish a lot of tandem rigs. Mm -hmm. I use less blades. Blades are very bright, sunny movement. Not saying you won't catch them. Right. There's time in the day for that. But I fish a lot of tandem rigs, a little bit slower profile things here. Um, we just have a few things we threw together here at the so shop. What areas do you like to use those around? Really, the same areas I'd be <clears throat> fishing: perch patterns and other stuff throughout the main. So rocks, rocks, rocks oyster, piers, all sorts of stuff yeah. like that. Now, as we progress here into the next couple mm -hmm. of weeks, we're going to start seeing more perch out on like hard bottom. Right. Um, they probably are going to start out in 15 feet, and they're going to move to 20 feet as we progress and get colder and colder and colder. But jigging sting silvers, yeah. um, sabiki rigs, things like that over those, it's really hard. And remember, to guys, these areas that we're speaking of are everywhere. Yep. Not just in one area. Uh, a typical spot that I always, like, you know, grew up fishing, I can tell you that will be productive with stuff like that when we're talking about a little bit deeper waters, Hackett's. Mm -hmm. Hackett's Point, it's normally, there's some hard bottom in there. Yeah. Uh, and there's some moisture uh, reefs out there and just reefs in general. A lot of this information is available in apps like the yep. Navionics app Navionics or even on uh, some of the DNR websites I believe. DNR have website, maps, we sell some maps yeah. that are going to show some of those places. Mm -hmm. um, um, another so place that comes to mind is just towards the mouth of the Chester there, there's all sorts of pieces of our bottom, yeah. oyster reefs, other stuff like that. And you know, don't be afraid to adventure out there because uh -huh. we'll move from spot to spot because you know, some of them might produce better than others. Uh, one of the things I personally like to use this time of the year with tandems and stuff like that is this bust some baits stingers i mean i think uh, i use them all year long mm -hmm. uh, and all kinds of species but when we're talking perch in general and even some smaller rockfish i like to put those on the back of my jigs and even perch batters and give them just a little bit of uh action on there now let's moving on from perch and stuff we are still having some success and uh with puppy drum and speckled trout in this general mm -hmm. area and also down south uh towards uh the Tangier good, Sound, that's where it really is picking up for trout and puppy drum. But yeah, if you're targeting your puppy drum around here, this uh, South River has been one of the ones I person been here and that has been producing some good size uh, puppy drum, not keepers, but you know, fun to catch while you're perch fishing and some speckled trout too. Yeah. Uh, we see those reports all the time. Uh, it seems like this year, like we mentioned before, has been one of the better years for puppy mm -hmm, drum that they kind of sure. just exploded and they they're came everywhere way up further than at least consistently than they had mm -hmm. in the past years at least in my lifetime yeah. yeah they came way up way up so remember if you really want to target them sometimes just don't perch stuff we'll just yep. catch them uh, we go uh, back to the paddle tails yeah. again i mean paddle tails catch just about anything mm -hmm. for a reason we throw a lot of those um like you said over at uh the south river mm -hmm. you cross your way over towards back by poplar island and stuff too it's also another area you could for sure and sometimes not necessarily there. just fishing shallow but i've mm -hmm. seen some guys trolling kind of mid depth range where they're catching some smaller puppy drums on the spoons uh, -huh. uh but yeah don't uh, don't be surprised if you catch a few more uh definitely you know the fall's not over yet not uh, over it's, yet. it's pretty much just getting started and with that, like I said, in the 10-year sound, uh, I know a person was on the north side of the 10-year, and there's still a lot of decent-sized speckled trout. Uh, there's a lot of grass. You want to use some of these uh, weedless uh, jig heads where you can uh, actually throw them in some heavier cover because sometimes mm -hmm. they're sitting there. And just your paddles, as we keep mentioning that, those two work perfectly together, and you can catch all kinds of stuff, rockfish, trout, speckled trout, all the good stuff. And good old popping cord. Popping corn, more and more popular by the day. Yeah, and I mean, I personally don't use them too much, but they do uh, hold a little spot in my tackle box just in case. Yeah. You know, sometimes that presentation actually works pretty good. But yeah, I mean, anything else uh, that you can hear yeah. about out there? Well, let's move on. Tell us a little about the snakeheads this week. Snake How are they doing yeah. down there? So snakeheads out in Blackwater have been uh, super decent fish. Uh, the biggest thing I want you guys to understand is that it, it is slower. Mm -hmm. It is going to be a little bit slower for you guys. This doesn't mean that you're not going to catch them. I mean, of course, uh, there's a lot of variables out there, but you're going from having the double digit days from the summer to catching a few. And mm -hmm. that's still a good day. 
uh, this time of the year, you know, you can still catch them with lures. A lot of people have been saying, yeah, like even myself at points have been saying that, yeah, it is getting a little bit harder to catch them with lures. In a way, that's true. Uh, it will turn into a live bait uh, mm -hmm. bite later in the season, but it, they're still producing fish. I've actually seen more bigger fish and more fish being caught on the west, uh, you know, on the west side. Yeah. What, you know, on this western shore than the eastern shore for the past week. Uh, with bigger fish being pulled out of the grass up in the, you know, the Bush River, uh, all those areas up north. So when we talk about lures, just like everything, you know, a lot in the mm -hmm. summertime we're fishing blade baits, a lot of chatter baits, um, aggressive right. presentations. Now we're slowing down to things, maybe suspending jerk baits. If you have spots Finesse. where that grass is right. let off, finesse baits, four inch paddle tails on a small hook, just slowly yeah. swimming that and things like that are going to be. And from my experience, fishing black water over the past few weeks has been that uh, it is more of a finesse bait, smaller presentations, mm -hmm. like you said. And actually, almost jigging them on the, on the bottom at times. You know, just slow, slow down, downsize. You're still going to catch big fish with smaller baits. Uh, they're slowing down, so keep that in mind. And of course, minnows will never fail you out there. Mm -hmm. I personally don't throw too many of them, but sometimes they will produce more than lures. Uh, and then if you're fishing on this western shore, I know they're still hitting top water in some areas because it's just hard cover. So yeah. I mean, like. Like what I mean, not hard cover, but I mean like grass and all that. So you can't really throw much stuff in there. So there's some fish still willing to hit top water and awesome. small windows, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, let's move on from the snake hits and go on to our coastal stuff, surf fishing, anything like that. I mean, it's yeah. picking up and this is a time of the year where it usually picks up pretty well for all you guys fishing the coast. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff moving through the surf. Uh, everything's about to pick up down there. I uh, keep seeing a lot of sheep's head, uh, tall mm -hmm. in the inlet, small blue Big fish. Big tall in the inlet. Uh, and, you know, even some rockfish at night. Uh, surf fishing wise, bluefish, lots of snapper blues. A lot of fish. Uh, and those red, uh, red drum are still moving through there. Also, if you're going to push off a little bit, maybe you're not fishing from shore like uh -huh. that, but you still have the opportunity. The sea bass fishing has been pretty good from uh -huh. my understanding. A lot of big sea bass have been caught in the past two yeah. weeks. So, and we have some uh, rigs here and stuff that will work for you guys surf fishing if you guys are going to Assateague. So, uh, most of these will work for bluefish, drum, and all of that. Uh, finger mullet uh, rig. You can put a whole finger finger mullet in there. Uh, this guy here is for bigger chunks of bait, like your bunker, uh, big big chunks of uh, you know mullet. And those gulps always work pretty good to have in the tackle box if you're going to catch them with kingfish and maybe cut them up for mm -hmm. bait. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's still producing. Flounder are still running through the inlet. Uh, I didn't hear of too, too many keepers, but that's been producing. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, crabbing wise, what have you heard? Uh, once again, we're still going deeper. The crabs you're going to catch are big, full, heavy crabs like you usually see this time of the year. Mm -hmm. They're fattening up for the winter. Um, numbers starting to maybe fizzle out. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. I haven't heard too much. Not as many people are crabbing. Um, but the people who are still going out, they're catching crabs. The watermen, a lot right. of guys are still selling crabs online, so I assume it's pretty good, but now, not too many people are going. Let me ask you this, because uh, it's always a question. Racer clams or chicken eggs? Well, I got to go with clams right now. In the summer months, uh -huh. I like the chicken eggs. Springtime, I like the, um, you know, the razor clams, and I think the razor clams produce more, but I think when the crabs become plentiful, you don't need them. The crab starting when the crabbing starts to so slow they're down. Picky, huh? They're getting picky. There you it's go. Time to go back to clams. So you heard from the man himself, racer clams. All about the That's, clams. It's all about the clams. So if you're trying to catch those crabs, get some of those last mm -hmm. few, you know, uh, crabs in for the season. You gotta get some clams, and of course right. we have them. So I think we're gonna finish up here. Yeah, and come then, check us out next yeah. weekend, 16, 17, and 18. Sales on all sorts of stuff. Alex one can figure out how to hold them free. up. <laughs> Rapalos, two Rapalos, you get a shirt, you get a hat, one of your choosings there, all sorts of other great deals. Yeah, on. and then, you know, of course, me and Sammy here and everybody else are going to be in we'll the be store. Here. If you need help with anything, get us. Uh, we are more than welcome to help you guys out. Send us your pictures, reports. Uh, we'll post them up. And you guys have fun out there. Uh, stay safe and catch them up. Good luck to you guys this week.